So, Andy Murray, here we are. We're in England at the start of the summer, and um, I know you're busy all year round, but uh, this is when you, you really get busy. And this year it's a bit different, isn't it? Because apart from this small matter, the French, Wimbledon, US Open, you've also got the Olympics. Now, I know it's, you know, it's every four years, but it's a big old year, isn't it? A big summer for you. Yeah, a huge year. Uh, and anyway, it's probably the most important in my career, I would have thought. Um, the Olympics going to be... Um, I think incredible. It's going to be, um, there's been a lot of pressure and stress, but also a lot of excitement as well. Um, you know, Wimbledon and, and obviously the, Olymp the Olympics is the biggest sporting, um, you know, it's the biggest sporting competition by far. Wimbledon in, in my sport, in tennis, is, is probably the biggest. So to get the chance to play two in the space of three or four weeks. Um, you know, in the UK, it's, it's going to be great, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's a really sort of unusual set of circumstances, because for, for start, it's only once every four years, but in this case, it's not just any old Olympics, yeah. is it? It's the Olympics in, in London, so it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you. And yeah. it kind of begs the question, I mean, you know, people bang on about, or oh, you haven't quite yet won, won that slam, but the Olympics, that's got to be at least as big, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've, um, I've, I've spoken a lot about it this year, and the, the Olympics, it's, it's different to the Slam, there's a different feel to it, but if you look at how much it means to, like at the last Olympics, Djokovic won a bronze medal at the Olympics and he was in tears. If you lost in the semi-finals of a Grand Slam, there, everybody's disappointed, you're down about it, you're upset, but just getting a medal at a Slam, it's a, it's a different feeling. You feel well, there's a lot of emotion when you're playing for your country as well, as opposed to... Um, you know, when you're playing in a slam, it's, it's different. So yeah, the, I, was, I was saying that I think winning a gold medal in the Olympics is, is the ultimate sporting achievement, like a gold medal. Whereas within tennis, probably winning a grand slam is, but for, you know, in worldwide terms, I think winning a gold medal is probably means means more. Now, you're, I know you're a massive sports fan. You love your boxing, don't you? And, uh, you know, your football and your banging on about your fantasy league on Twitter and you even though you go karting don't you and you play your eleven aside football don't you? So I know you're a big sports nut. Um, as the Olympics as a whole, are you gonna get the chance to take any of it in? Uh, I hope so. At the last Olympics um, probably didn't play well. Um, I got to see some boxing and I, and I went to see some badminton as well. Which Is that was... because you didn't play well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Silver lining then. Yeah. Um, so yeah at least I got to, to take in some of the other sports but um, the, uh, one of the uh, the cycling routes goes through um, Oxshop where I live, um, right. so I might get to see some of that. The power yeah. that you have, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> How much should it take uh, to persuade them to do that? Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, I, I want to try and get to see some of the other events. It's it's pretty, I mean, rare you get to see other other sports, especially the best in the world of things. I mean, the last Olympics. Um, yeah, I would have liked to play better, but I also want to make sure I take in some other sports. You can also learn a lot from, from watching and, and just being part of the, the general atmosphere of the, the games is, is great. In a funny sort of way, and I know it's dangerous talk because you can't pick and choose. You, you'll, whatever opportunity comes your way, you, you, you'll take. But you've got a few more um, attempts at, at the slams, haven't you? Well, you've got one shot only at a London Olympics. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. That's where you know I have... Well, I, mean, I love sports. So I have a lot of respect for, you know, the, the track and field athletes, um, and uh, well, most of the athletes at the Olympics they work all their life to, to, to win an Olympic gold medal. That's you know, four years um, they have to wait for it. They can't mess up. They can't false start. You know, you can't prepare all that time and, and make mistakes. It's so it's so tough, there's so much pressure and, and so much work's gone into it that you, you, know, you really need to make sure your performance it doesn't just come around the next day, you've got to wait a long, long time whereas, you know, at least in tennis, you know, we've got another chance at a slam you know, but with, with the Olympics, you, you don't have that luxury. The funny thing about the Olympics, of course, is that, I mean, every year, come Wimbledon, you when it happens, a whole country goes mummy mania and, and I think we've spoken about this before, sort of, you know, how do you deal with the pressure and you, you, I think your, your reply is always, I don't really see it like that, it's, it's really great to have that sort of support on my back. Well, this time, you're going to have it twice. Yeah, I think the thing that I just, I just find it strange, in all sports, everybody agrees that having home advantage is, well, it's home advantage. You don't play at home and teams crumble in football. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the home support behind you. It helps you. And, you know, all sports, that's the case. Um, whereas with tennis, people seem to think, well, 
oh, there's so much pressure. But actually, you know, you look at Tim Hammond's results, he had his best results of his career on grass. Yes, his game was suited to that, but he also reached the semi-finals of, you know, the other slams as well. So it was his consistency there was helped because of the, you know, the crowd. People used to say of you, oh, maybe best surfaces. Well, it was Wimbledon and it was grass originally, and then it turned to hard court. But, I mean, you reached the semis of, of the French, didn't you, last year? So, I mean, you're not too shabby on any surface. Uh, well, my clay court game needed to, to improve. It still does need to mm. improve, but um, I started to I learned a lot on the clay last year, um, and I started to believe in myself more. And again, to the semi-finals of the French Open helped with that. And yeah, like it's it's nice now knowing sort of going into the clay court stretch that you have a, an opportunity to win the turn. Whereas earlier in my career on the clay, it was sort of like a quarterfinals was like that's good or semi-finals. Whereas now you have the opportunity to, to win, so you know it makes working hard much, much easier. And the other myth is, oh, it must be really tough when you've got Djokovic and Nadal and, and, and Federer, and if you've been born another time, but uh, I mean, you're part of this golden era, I guess, and without putting words in your mouth, it's going to make you better, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the, the thing is, if, if they weren't there, then I probably would have won more, but at the same time, I might not have been as good a tennis player, so... With having those guys around, and I've had to raise my game. Um, you know, I've improved a lot. I've learned a lot from from each one of them as well. And um, you are edging. You're edging closer and closer, aren't you? Yeah, I feel like each year I've I've continued to improve, and you know, I've made some changes to you know, the the coaching setup that I have, which is hopefully going to help as well. But you know, when I stop improving, then I'll be worried. But you know, I have kept improving each year, and hopefully this will be my year. Now, changing sports, you're a huge fight fan, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Huge fan, perhaps even a bigger fight fan than a tennis fan. Yeah. Um, and uh, you makes David Hay. He's going to come back in the ring. Um, Klitschko, what do you think? Vitali, the older one, the bigger one. Uh, it's tough, I think. I think it's a tough fight for him, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I watch a lot of the, I've watched a lot of the Klitschko's fight, and they just win. Mm. That's, they're just great at winning. I mean, it doesn't always look pretty but they win and that's all that really matters. He's a huge guy, way, way bigger than David Hay. Um, you know, but it would be an interesting fight. I think it'd be good. Klitschko's getting older, um, so hopefully slowing down a little bit, but he could win. And looking at your face, your nose is not squashed or broken, yeah. which suggests as much as you like fighting, you don't do a lot yourself. Yeah, no, there's a lot of people out there that like to hit me but <laughs> I've managed to avoid it uh, so far. But yeah, never um, Never actually had a fight ever in my, in my life, but apart from with my brother, but that was more sort of slapping rather than, mm. than punching. That wasn't with gloves or anything, that no, was it? No, that was just a sort gloves, of a but, um, couple of flailing arms. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I would like to, when I finish playing, get in the, the ring. Uh, I know Tim Hemmons actually started boxing a little bit. Has so he? wouldn't mind having a go at him. Hemmons v. Murray? Yeah, exactly. That would be fun. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay, then, Annie, well, good to see you. Best of luck in the summer, okay? Thank you.